Hello, today we will talk about random walk theory. This theory, this mathematical theory, has a big application in uh, random motion of molecules in the atmosphere and kinetic theory of gases in general. Air is a mixture of uh, different gases and uh, I talked about that in my video on atmosphere as a continuum, so I recommend you check that one, the link is in the description. Air is made up of a bunch of molecules and uh, for the purpose of this video we can represent these molecules as a small indestructible balls of uh, substance. And uh, each molecule, let's say, is moving in a certain direction and then it uh, happens to encounter another molecule and they collide and they kind of ricochet in a random direction. Because there are zillions of molecules, they are constantly hitting each other on all possible uh, ways and then their motion as a whole is kind of random and uh, this random motion of uh, molecules in air as well as uh, in other fluids can be well represented using the theory of random walk. The same theory also holds for other uh, uh, micro scale particles, not necessarily mo molecules. So if we have some very fine small scale dust particle of aerosol in air uh, that is not visible by eye but by microscope and uh, other devices then uh, these particles also exhibit this so-called random uh, motion specific term is brownian motion but we will talk about brownian motion in the next video in this video we will derive the mathematical tool that describes this random uh, motion of uh, molecules and we will see how the mathematics itself without physics or maybe with a minimum uh, amount of input from physics can still give us a result with great great application in atmospheric sciences and physics in general. So let's do it. I will first model the motion of a molecule in one dimensional case and then at the end of the video you will see how easy and elegant it is to generalize the result to two or three dimensions. In one dimensional case I will have uh, just an axis and let's call it x axis and uh, my particle will start at x equals zero and time t equals zero and it can go right or left. Now, to model the motion of this particle, I just need to introduce three simple uh, rules. And these are, the rule number one is that particle can go to the right or to the left every tau seconds and it is moving with velocity plus minus vx. Which means if I split this axis into discrete distances, let's call it delta, and then this one would be 2 delta, here 3 delta, and so on. And here I would have minus delta, minus 2 delta, and so on. Then what I'm saying is that rule number 1, delta is equal plus minus vx times tau. Very intuitive and simple. Where delta is constant, so each jump is a constant distance, and each occurs after tau seconds. So this is also constant. Rule number two says that probability to go right is equal to probability to go left, which means both of them are one half. And you can already see that this motion, thanks to rule number two, can be modeled as a simple uh, coin toss. Let's say if I get head, particle will move right, if I get tails, particle will move left. And uh, we know that uh, uh, this type of, pro of uh, process can be modeled using a binomial distribution. And if the sample is very large, which means if I have many jumps, if, the time, if I measure this for very long time, then my sample uh, becomes very large and my binomial distribution, uh, thanks to uh, central limit theorem, converges to normal distribution, which means that after some long time, the position of the particle can be represented using normal distribution, which would be like this. And the normal distribution would have mean zero. 
because the likelihood to go right is equal to the likelihood of go left, which means on average particle wouldn't go anywhere, but the spread of this normal distribution will tell us what is the average uh, spread or the average, let's say, roaming distance of this particle. Uh, how far, after some time t, how far it is likely to go in either of the directions. Although, on average, the most likely position of the particle is at the beginning, x equals zero. I will additionally kind of strengthen rule number two by saying that uh, wherever particle is, after some n steps, it doesn't know uh, from where it arrived there. What do I mean by that? Let's say after many steps, particle finds itself at 2 delta. It doesn't know if it came here from 3 delta or delta, which means that in the next step, it is equally likely to go to 3 delta or 2 delta, and I call that memory loss. Memory loss basically tells us that the rule number two will be preserved for all times. Okay, now let's uh, derive mathematically the spread of this normal distribution that measures the displacement of the particle. And uh, it is represented through the quantity called mean square displacement, which measures the deviation of the position of the particle with respect to the reference position, which is x equals 0, and reference time, which is t equals 0. To do that, I'll say the following. Let x of n be the position of the particle after n steps. Then, thanks to rule number 1, it is equal to x n minus 1 plus minus delta which means the particle could have found itself at x of n from, the previous, uh, from uh, where it was in the previous step and then traversing the distance plus minus delta. To get the mean square displacement, I first need to square this equation, and then I get x square of n is equal x square n minus 1, plus delta, when I square this minus also becomes plus, and uh, plus minus the cross product of these two, two delta x n minus one. And now I will take the ensemble mean, or the mean over very long uh, period of time of uh, the position of, of, of this equation, of the square of the position of the particle, and I get that the mean square distance after n steps is equal mean square distance after n minus 1 steps, sorry, here is 2, plus delta squared. I don't have to put mean on the delta squared because delta is constant. And this term is actually 0. It is 0 because of the rule 2 and 3. They tell me that the probability to go left and right is equally likely which is represented basically with this plus minus sign. So after many uh, movements, positive uh, steps average out the negative steps or jumps. Okay, now this is basically a recursive formula, which tells me that the position after n steps depends on the position of n minus one step. Well, let's see what this formula is telling us. We know that particle started at x equals 0. So the mean square displacement at the beginning is clearly 0. There is no displacement because it started at 0. But let's see in the first step. Well, in the first step, this formula tells me it is displacement, mean square displacement in the previous step, which was 0 plus delta squared, so it is delta squared. Let's see after second step. Well, the means, this formula tells me the mean square displacement was whatever it was in the previous step, which is delta squared, and plus this delta squared, I get two delta squared. And I can hope, I hope uh, 
you can see that, for example, the mean square displacement after three steps will simply be 3 delta squared, and so on. Which means that the mean square displacement after n steps is n times delta squared. And this is the formula that basically gives us the spread of this distribution. It tells us that the mean square displacement is proportional to the number of uh, jumps or steps this particle took. However, I would like to express this formula in terms of time rather than number of steps. And this is also uh, very simple because the, in rule number one, I said that one jump occurs every tau seconds. So n times tau jumps will be achieved in t seconds. So t is equal n times tau. Now I, I express n and plug in this equation and I will get that mean square displacement, but as a function of time now, is equal to time over this constant tau times delta squared. And I will just slightly rewrite the right-hand side to get that the mean square displacement is equal because tau and delta are constants, I will say delta squared over tau times t. And I can now introduce some substitution. Let's say alpha is identically equal to delta squared over tau. And voila, I get that the mean square displacement is equal to alpha times time. This tells me, if I take a square root of this equation, that the root mean square displacement will be function of the square root of time and not time, which means that the spread of this distribution or uh, the how far the particle will roam away from x equals zero will not depend on time, but the square root of uh, time, if I take the root mean square displacement here. I also told you that uh, it is very easy to generalize this formula to three directions, or three dimensions, and indeed it is, because uh, we know from physics that motion in uh, one direction is independent of the motion in uh, other direction. So if I performed this derivation for y direction, let's say I would get the same result, or for z direction, I would get the same result, I would just have here y or z, respectively. So if I take r to be my uh, distance in three dimensions, in Euclidean three-dimensional space, then from the Pythagoras theorem, I know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared and each of these will give me one of uh, will give me one of these results so the mean square displacement as function of time in three dimensions is simply equal three times this 3 alpha t so this is one dimensional case and this is a three dimensional case this problem in two dimensions is uh, also known as drunken sailor problem because the problem is the following. Let's say the sailor uh, leaves a bar here and he's drunk and his house is somewhere 100 meters uh, down the road. Let's say somewhere here is his house. Now, every second he takes a random step, random because he's drunk. So he, he will move something like this. Each step is equal length but in random direction. So the question is, if this guy ever gonna find his house, and if yes, after what period of time? And this formula, but in two directions, because he's moving on the surface of the earth, so I would have number two here, this formula in two directions will tell you after which time the poor guy will find his house. And that's called drunken sailor problem. You can see how this problem is very applicable to undergraduate students as well. 
Now, this theory has very wide application. It can be used to model random motion of molecules in air and small particles. It can also be used to estimate the time, an average time, for a photon of light to escape the interior of the sun and to reach the surface of the sun. But it can also be used to estimate the Brownian motion of COVID-19 particles suspended in the air. And uh, this is exactly what we will do in the next video. We will apply this theory to the COVID-19. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.